Good morning. It's Monday, May 20th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Barnabas Effect, and our scripture is Acts chapter 11. Meanwhile, the believers who had been scattered during the persecution after Stephen's death traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch of Syria. They preached the word of God, but only to Jews. However, some of the believers who went to Antioch from Cyprus and Cyrene began preaching to the Gentiles about the Lord Jesus. The power of the Lord was with them, and a large number of these Gentiles believed and turned to the Lord. When the church at Jerusalem heard what had happened, they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw this evidence of God's blessing, he was filled with joy, and he encouraged the believers to stay true to the Lord. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and strong in faith, and many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went on to Tarsus to look for Saul. When he found him, he brought him back to Antioch. Both of them stayed there with the church for a full year, teaching large crowds of people. It was at Antioch that the believers were first called Christians. It is God who ordains people to the ministry, setting apart those whom he has called to give their lives in calling others to faith in Christ. In the ceremony, we see the hands of the ordained bishops and other clergy placed on the head of the candidate as a symbol of that calling, consecrating the blessing of God. But there is a great and largely unseen force at work also, the Barnabas effect. The art of blessing from behind the scenes is truly a magnificent thing to discover in life. Most of the encouragers I know seem effortless about it. It's a gift that flows as naturally from them as the joy you see on an infant's face when she first notices that shiny, dangly mobile above her crib. Christians were scattered out in all directions from Jerusalem because of the persecution, and they told everybody about Jesus. It spread from being a new sect of Judaism into an everyone-welcome movement. Gentiles began flooding into the faith at Antioch, and Barnabas was sent to check out the reports. What this encourager of the first order found made his heart leap for joy, the fulfillment of prophecy that through Abraham's line all the world would be blessed. Barnabas stayed just long enough to encourage and support the revival, but he couldn't wait to go get Paul. When the apostle arrived at Antioch, the floodgates bringing tons of new Christian into the fold required the whole next year to train and turn loose for ministry all these new converts. While it was God at back of all the events, orchestrating and moving people by his spirit, Barnabas was the nexus God used to hold it all together and cross-pollinate goodness, joy, and obedience throughout the process. The importance of encouragement cannot be underestimated. I've seen firsthand how the Barnabas effect changes first the life of those who would minister, but then the trickle-down result of the spiritual midwife encouraging the new believer from their womb of being born again. It's the miracle of the Great Commission in action. Without Barnabas, there would be many stillborn of the faith and very few effective evangelists. From this preacher's perspective, my undying gratitude to all the Barnabas saints in my life, my bride, Missy, Anne, Mom, Tom, Rodney, David, Kenneth, Don, Marshall, Jennifer, Carrie, Sarah, and a truly a great cloud of others. For you today, Scripture tells us that winning people to faith in Christ is the work of all who would be obedient and hit the mark of God's calling. Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Barnabas encouragers fill a big gap in what the evangelists among us cannot do, not nearly as well as those called to pave the path to heaven with encouraging words and ways. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.